Hi, and welcome to the letter M, as in mastery, as in marvelous, as in Roberto Capucci. Quote, in Italy, you have a prodigy named Roberto Capucci. Should he turn up to Paris, I hope he comes to visit me, end of quote, Christian Dior once said. Roberto Capucci is definitely one of the haute couture's most underappreciated talents, and yet one of the most innovative ones, thanks to his cultural silhouettes, his striking color combination. In 1951, Giovanni Battista Giorgini invited him to present his fur collection in Florence, and he soon became the darling of the press. One of his early standout designs was the Nove Gonne Nine Skirts gown, created in 1956 for the American actress and swimming queen Esther Williams. Another revolutionary silhouette was the box line, launched in 1958 and developed over the years. Also in 1958, Capucci was awarded the Fine East Prize, a special recognition given every year to the best fashion designers by the department store Filene's in Boston. During the 60s, he paid several homages to contemporary art, as in this 1965 optical dress inspired by Victor Vasarely, and uh, in uh, this 1969 homage to Roberto Burri, the Italian multi-material artist. He even experimented with unusual mediums, both artificial, like plastic, or organic, like bamboo, petal, and raffia. In 1968, the Italian writer and filmmaker Pierpaolo Pasolini asked Capucci if he wanted to design the costumes for Silvana Mangano for his movie Teorema. Capucci enthusiastically accepted this offer, and he and Mangano became very good friends, and she loved being dressed by him offset as well. Among the notable women dressed by Capucci, we should remember Marilyn Monroe, Jacqueline Kennedy, and the scientist Rita Levi Montalcini, who wore a regal velvet gown in Stockholm when she received the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1986. A trip to India in 1970 was instrumental for the exploration of new colors and fabrics. Known as the silk sculpture, Capucci infused in his creation artistic vibes and architectural shapes never seen before. His dresses reveal a wide spectrum of color and inspiration, from art to nature. In 1980, with the rise of pret a porter he pursued an artistic path. To do so, he abandoned the chamber of fashion and decided to present his collection at his own pace in different towns and often in museums. In 1995, Roberto Capucci was invited to show his creations at the Venice Biennial, and he was the first couturier to show his work in an art showcase. For this occasion, Capucci created 12 stunning fabric sculpture. And established in Florence in 2005, Fondazione Roberto Capucci has the purpose of preserving and promoting knowledge of Roberto Capucci's work. In 2017, Roberto Capucci Foundation moved his headquarters and archive to the beautiful Villa Manin near Udine. Capucci's creations have been exhibited in museums all over the world. In 2011, Roberto Capucci Art into Fashion opened at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the first major exhibition in the U.S. dedicated to this master of colors and sculpture. We also have to mention a couple of recent homage to the maestro. The first is La Moda Proibita, Roberto Capucci e il futuro dell'alta moda, Forbidden Fashion, Roberto Capucci and the Future of the Haute Couture, which is a documentary directed by Ottavio Rosati and released in 2019. The second is the 2021 exhibition at the Triennale in Milan, aptly named Metafore, Roberto Capucci, Meraviglia della Forma, which translates to metaphors, Roberto Capucci, the marvels of form. Thanks for listening, and keep in mind what the legendary costume designer Edith Head said. Fashion is a language. Some know it, some learn it, like an instinct. Goodbye! <laughs>